When I first set this up, I set it as a uh, data directory as the initial storage configuration. And with that, you could see here as an example, this right here is my vault, which it handles the shares and all that. And you can see my data directory is a .raw file, which is a pretty simple file format that just contains all the files. And this is set up as a uh, 12 terabyte kind of directory scheme here. Now, I want to switch this to kind of a standard uh, ZFS pool, which I did with Flash right here. So if I go over to data center, I go to storage, you can see I have my uh, data, which you can see is a directory. Flash is just straight ZFS. This data is in tank vault, while the Flash just is acts as a kind of subdirectory on the root system in ZFS. Now this data is still in a ZFS RAID configuration, but I don't really want it to create those raw files. I want to be able to access them uh, pretty easily from both the kind of Proxmox root file system and any other uh, virtual machines or privileged containers. And doing it not the way I originally did it should make it a lot easier to kind of manage actual like ZFS things that are going on. And I just don't feel as comfortable having one large like 12 terabyte raw file spread between multiple hard drives. Probably fine, but I see more advantages to switching it this way. So what have I done so far? Well, I moved my entire goddamn data directory, which is massive. I did this through, I just kind of threw up this little temp uh, privileged container here. And you could see, I was checking out logs earlier. If I show you some of the commands I ran, uh, I ran an rsync, uh, ignore existing progress from the data directory, which I, as you can see, mounted to this um, container here. So that is the data directory. And I migrated over to Unraid. Now that this is a privileged container, if I set up Unraid kind of in the standard CFS uh, SMB mount, it is accessible on the root file system. What you can also see, I go to resources here, mounted. Whenever you add shares through the Unraid GUI directly, it's a mount PVE and then whatever you call it, just mount that as Unraid. So then I was able to migrate everything into a migration data folder here. This took absolutely forever because as you can see here, my uh, 12 terabyte data kind of directory is 60% full and I only have a, a gigabit network, took probably about 30 hours. So now what I'm gonna do real quick is just kind of get out of here and let's CD into data, uh, LS. You can see it. this is everything I moved over. And if I CD into Unraid, into that migration folder, data, data, oh, LS, there we go. We have the exact same thing going on here. Music, temp, downloads, whole movies, boop, 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 boop. So we're good, my data's backed up. So now I should be able to screw around which for this, honestly, I'm going to have to probably shut some things down. Gonna check some of these other things. So that's only using Flash. Plex here has that data mount. So I'm gonna need to get rid of these from all the containers that are currently using it. Thankfully, I have the Flash stuff, which is all my Docker configurations, already stored in a way that I want it to be. So let's shut it down. Shut down everything using that data structure. Ah, uh, it looks like I accidentally set up uh, the proxy to have the root disk as data instead of flash. So that's my bad. I'm gonna have to go back up that real quick. Uh, pie hole, I did correctly. This I did correctly, but I'm still gonna have to shut her down. So I shut down everything using data except for proxy here, which I can actually just show you real quick how I'm gonna uh, back this up. So I'm actually gonna redo this container. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. So if I go more, remove 102, destroy unreferenced disks. And now I need to change the configuration of these three. So let's go into Proxmox here, or Proxmox uh, configurations. So first things first, nano into 100. I'm gonna get rid of this data mount point right here like so and i could probably just change this to mount point zero and now let's repeat this for 101 which is serve r get rid of that this is now going to be mount point zero boom and now for plex so plex is the 200 configuration 
And you can see I have Unraid mounted in there that's currently hosting the files because I still want to kind of keep Plex running during the uh, data migration I'm going to have to do in a little bit. So this is mount point zero. And let's output that. There we go. So now if I go into like Vault, for example, resources, I no longer have that data mount and I shouldn't have a data mount point referenced anywhere. <gasps> Except for here, this is temp. I could also get rid of this because it is definitely just a temp container. So let's stop it and then get rid of it. Again, I was only using that to be my kind of uh, migration, data migration task. So uh, destroy unreferenced disks by owner. Now that might actually remove that entire thing since nothing else is referencing it. And now if we go over here into data, we have VM disks. So it shouldn't be, oh, there it is. This is our big raw data folder. I'm gonna remove that from the guest hardware pane. For the record, and as you can obviously tell, I am a learner. I'm learning everything about Proxmox kind of as I go here. Let's shut it down. Kind of reload that configuration, hopefully. And while that shuts down, let's go back over here. Is it gonna let me remove it? Nope. So let's go into our data center and go under storage. And we have this right here. This is data. Uh, let's, let's just see if we can remove it this way. Boop. Ah, right here, backup. Let's get rid of this too. I haven't even set up my backups yet. And it's also in that tank directory that I created. So let's remove this and there we go. Oh, there it is. ZFS. We have tank right here. So let us, let us destroy this pool. So more destroy, uh, enter the ID to confirm and clean up disk, clean up storage, remove. That might take a minute. All right, there we go. And just to kind of check where I was earlier, if I jump into the shell, CD in the tank, no such directory. So now let's go back to ZFS and recreate it. This, I'm going to keep the same name as tank. Uh, compression level, I think RAID Z is one disk and we will add it to storage. And that's kind of the difference earlier. I didn't add it directly to storage. I uh, unchecked that and then I made a separate directory, but this time I am going to keep it. Let's check all these devices and uncheck the things that aren't the four terabyte hard drives. Just checking, making sure what I went with here in uh, LZ4. We're going to do compression of LZ4 and perfect. <laughs> I secretly make guides kind of for myself so I can cross cross reference them later. Uh, let's, let's do this. So let's hit create since we added it to the storage, it should add it just like it did with flash, which is my preference done. So now we have tank. Awesome. We have tank right there. Nice empty all four drives in ZFS. So now theoretically, I should be able to just go to my vault here and recreate the data directory. So if I go add mount point, this time we're going to use tank and this is going to be 12,000 GIB. So there we go. That should work perfectly. So if I create that, give it a minute. So now our new mount point one is the sub volume, which is nice. So it's not a raw file. It's an actual uh, directory scheme on the root system, not root system on that, uh, the sub volume of our new ZFS creation or pool. You know what I'm trying to say? And because it's following the kind of same directory scheme, I shouldn't really have anything I need to do in cockpit. But if I go over here, let's log in as my user CD into our root LS. You can see I have data and Docker. If I CD into data, it should be empty now, but let's kind of test permissions here, test.txt. Uh, IPA, I have to do IPs now since I don't have my, uh, my proxy running. Copy that, 9090, boom, visit this website, visit. We're gonna go ahead and log in and try to fix the permissions real fast. It should be pretty easy. I'm gonna sudo myself. So I have super user pr privileges, go over to the navigator. We can see my data directory here, which as a non pseudo user, I currently don't have the permissions. So you can see right here, root and root. Uh, let's 
customize this. So the owner is going to be Brandon. Brandon, and then this is going to be data share. So these are now the owners. The group is going to be able to write to it. Let's save that. And now I should be able to should be able to touch it. Oh, I love it when things just just work how they're supposed to. If you've played around with this, you'll notice sometimes that. Eh, so then I kind of just repeat the steps from earlier. I'm not going to bore you too much with it, but I'll do it with at least the uh, servar that I have there. So if I, uh, not CD, actually, yeah, it's going to be a CD. If I go back to these, where, where is it? Where is it? There we go. If I CD back into my LXC configurations, and then I'm going to cat this uh, 100 comp here. The mount point one, the new tank sub volume instead of the raw file. I'm going to give this a copy and then I'm going to nano into 101, which is our servar. And let's drop this in here under mount point zero. Boop, boop. There we go. Save this and then I would repeat this with a uh, plex and any other thing or container that I was using that with. So just to confirm permissions are still good because I kind of tried to set this up so I have the same permissions for that same brand and user throughout all these different containers. So let, let's see if that holds true or if I have to edit it in every single one. So CD into root and we'll have data and Docker just like vault. And now if I CD into data, I should be able to LS and C test Oh no, it's going to start downloading things. Um, at least it, cr it created the folder. So now if I try to uh, touch another test.txt, nice. So there we go. Now I'm going to begin the slow and painful process of migrating everything back over. I'm going to shut this down because I don't want it to start downloading media. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'll come back when I got all that squared away and I actually do research in learn how to do the next step. Bye. <laughs>